not only is just a, a great dish to experience, but it's also a great dish to look at as you're seeing the, the person preparing it for you. That's what drew it towards me. So I went to one of your pop-ups. I'm not even kidding. Very first sip of the soup. I knew immediately this guy knows what he's doing. There was just something about the depth of the flavor, like he built umami in it, had to talk to you <laughs> after after that bowl. I think we hit it off a little bit and just kind of kept in touch. Hey, I'm Will Brazier and I make ramen. I've been doing it for about 10 years uh, here in the Rio Grande Valley. I'm from Edinburgh, born and raised. And this is my new partner, Carlos. Yeah, so I'm Carlos Bencourt. Uh, been making ramen for several years now, I would say. Been to Japan several times to, you know, eat ramen, learn about the different styles, and just found a love for making it at home from scratch. The first time I've ever cooked anything on top of a stove was instant ramen. <laughs> you know, being like a little, little, little kid and hanging out with my cousins, you know, in the hot summer heat, and then coming in after a, a day of play and making instant ramen and you know that was always very like satisfying even though it was 100 degrees outside <laughs> hotter than hell you know <laughs> and it, it was just very comforting so it wasn't until you know my mid mid 20s when a friend of mine made homemade ramen out of a, of a book from David Chang which is the Momofuku book and I was like hey this is this is uh, a dish that I've enjoyed, you know, um, through my whole life. And then now it's, it's, it's a little bit elevated. You know, this is something that, you know, maybe um, I could take a little bit seriously. And then looking through videos on YouTube and uh, reading books. But at that time, everything was in Japanese. So it was very mysterious to me. And um everything on youtube um, just looking at the way uh, people in the ramen shops worked and all the ladle work and like everything they were doing i was like you know what is this you know that this looks really cool the way they're like uh very technical and specific methodical about, right very methodical and i like that kind of stuff you know I'm, i like perfection um, i like performance art you know, I marched drum corps for three years too. I'm, um, so all, the, all those types of movements are very uh, interesting and intriguing to me as an individual. And I think ramen not only is just a, a great dish to experience, but it's also a great dish to look at as you're seeing the, the person preparing it for you, you know? And I, I really like that. So that's what that that's what drew it towards me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that was beautiful. Like, <laughs> what made you want to tag along? Yeah. So I mean, so I've. How do we meet? How did we meet? Okay. So, internet. I yeah. So internet. So I've been in. I've been into ramen quite a bit too. Um, I kind of got started watching it's funny because you say david chang Mama, Mama Fuku book uh i watched i found out about it through watching mind of a chef on pbs mm -hmm. there was a, the very first episode it was david chang and peter Meehan, and yeah. they go eat a ramen dish called skimmin yeah and it's this big old bowl of noodles and the soup is separate and just that whole concept because having also grown up with instant ramen and things like that that was just so interesting to me because skimmin you have your noodles, grab noodles, you dip it in the broth, and then you slurp, you eat it. And I saw that and my mind was just like blown. I did not know something like that existed. Yeah. So at the time I was living in Austin, went to Ramen Tatsuya, found out they had skimming on the menu, ordered it. Again, mind blown. It was just, it was just this crazy thing. So from there, I, I just grew this, this affection for, for just the Japanese culture, the food. Fortunate, I've been fortunate to be able to go to Japan for like three or four times already. Yeah, I just started cooking it at home. My very first bowls were absolutely completely terrible. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Same. Just like, just like Will, he would, like I didn't understand the concept of putting like tare and putting, and how the oil into the soup and how it eats, like it, it adds this aroma to it. I didn't understand that at all. Yeah. 
but over the years of making it more and more and more and, you know, figuring out the portions, it just, I just started making it a little bit better, I would say. Started wrong. to come together. Yeah. So I was interested in that. Had no idea about Will. His papa's down here at all. Uh, I had li been living in Austin. Moved back to the Valley uh, about three years ago or so. And I found out that there was a guy named Bill Brazier <laughs> making ramen uh, in the valley. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, let's go try it out. So I went to one of your pop-ups at uh, Grind mm -hmm. in Edinburgh. Coffee shop. Yeah. And I'm not even kidding. Very first, uh, like, slip of the soup. I knew immediately this guy knows what he's doing. There was just something about the, the, the depth of the flavor. Like, he built umami in it. He put intention to care in it. Like I knew immediately, like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. So had to talk to you yeah. <laughs> after after that bowl. I think we hit it off a little bit and just kind of kept in touch. And now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> funny, funny thing. Uh, while he first met me, I remember we're sitting down in the, the coffee shop. And I don't know how it came up, but you thought that I had been to Japan. Yes. And he, yes. Uh, I remember that. Like, and I told him, like, oh, I've never j been to Japan before. And I could Carlos was like, well, you could have fucking fooled me. <laughs> Sorry, can I cuss? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you could have fooled me, seriously. Seriously. He said, I could have fucking fooled me. Yeah. And you still haven't been. <laughs> well, the, the menu is very somewhat limited. You know, we usually do just like one style of bowl. In Japan, there's. Uh, there's four main styles of ramen. There's tonkotsu, which is the number one style pork, in America. Pork, pork bone broth. It's pork bone broth. It's creamy. It's, it's creamy. It's thick. Um, it just, it just, boom! It hits you in the face, right? But the 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 two other styles that aren't very known in America are the shio and the shoyu ramens. The shio ramen, of course, in Japanese means salt, so it's just flavored with a with a light dashi. Um, the, the dashi is uh, just like a lot of salt in it. So it's put into the bottom of the bowl and you got your soup and then you got your oil. Okay. And then the other style, which is, I, I like to call them like the, the brother and sister of, of the two styles. And the other one is, of course, to show you which we're serving tonight right now. And that one's made out of soy sauce. Um, show you is means soy sauce in Japanese. Um, well, not soy sauce. Let's do that again. Ready? So shoyu is soy, right, in Japanese. And um, many shops do different blends, you know, depending on the, 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 the area of where they're from. They'll, yeah. they'll take different, different uh, shoyus, blend them together to make a complex um, salt-based tare, and tare is sauce. The seasoning that, the, of, the, of the Right, ramen. the sauce yeah. is the seasoning for the bowl, and that's what kind of dictates the, the style of, of the soup that you're gonna uh, consume. I'll show you, I blended three different types, cooked in uh, some aromatics, which are uh, dry chitake, kombu, which is seaweed, and uh, katsuobushi or bonito is what people uh, normally recognize it as. It's very thin shaved uh, tuna. The flavor bomb. Right, that's, yeah. that's been smoked and cured for a very long time. And as people may or may not know, kombu and katsubushi, when combined together, creates this explosion of umami. This, and this, umami the synergy. is- Synergy. Yeah, the yeah. synergistic yeah. Uh, combination that creates and a sensation of just savoriness, you know? And it can be confused with uh, something that tastes salty. So you can actually replace, you know, things that are hot, rich in umami with salt, you know? Uh, instead of salt, have umami rich foods, you know? So that's like almost the main goal of, of the ramen experience. You know, you, you do need the salt, you need this, this the, the salt, the, um, the sweetness, the the sourness, you know, a little bit, but that umami is what really uh, makes people think like, wow, like 
this is something. what am i eating yeah what is and this th they're not they're not too sure like what they're experiencing yeah because you know you know it's in other cultures it it, it does exist you know in italy it's very rich umami but they don't call it that you know in italy you have you have italy. your your pomodoro and you have uh, cooking your pomodoro with um Oil, yeah, yeah and garlic yeah. and um parmesan cheese you know but parmesan is so rich yeah. yeah and people eat it and they're just like oh my god this, this is so good it's yeah heavenly. yeah yeah <laughs> right oh, yeah. it's just like the good eye the philosophy right yeah. so that's that's the that's the main i guess a uh, goal for for re for creating a perfect bowl of ramen is um that umami experience yep. that but balanced and that that's 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 very difficult um when it comes to to making ramen because everything has to be balanced you know the thickness of the noodles what kind of wheat you're using you know that the type of meat that you're you're making a broth out of you know the portions of those fish seafood components that go into it and the soy sauce and the salt and you know it's it's very challenging you know that even after all this time you know 10 years wow it's amazing that i still feel like there, there's you're, you can always get better and then yeah. meeting Car carlos you know like he's he's very like he communicates with me a lot all the time we text each other all the time Bounce now ideas. ever since we've you know started getting serious about you know doing ramen prosper um we're we're trying to be always be better yep. and and improve on the craft of making ramen for ourselves you know to be better uh, individuals and to to service people that 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 don't know what real ramen is you know especially in the rio grande valley you know because we're, we're a mexico border town and uh, the food here is very very specific you know, when it comes to culture. And it's good to uh, embrace other cultures, yep. just like Japan. You know, maybe we'll combine the two um, yep. and create something that's completely unique to the region because ramen is regional as well. Um, depending on where you are in Japan, uh, depending, uh, you can get different ingredients from that certain uh, area yep. and create something completely unique and um, maybe maybe we can do that too. And I'm I'm happy to to experience that together yeah. with Carlos and create something unique to the valley. I think Any that perfectly just perfectly summed it up. <laughs> yeah, I think we got to do the noodles. <laughs> hey, is the water boiling? Not yet. Hey, get, get that on tape too. Uh -oh. Hey, <laughs> just kidding. We're we're making something funny. If you feel like sharing more, the last question is what, do you, is there anything you want the people, well, you really said a lot, but if there's anything, last words that you want the community to know, and we can also put uh, words in the caption. Well, um, we've got the fortunate opportunity to been uh, offered a place to work as Ramen Prosper in an actual kitchen. So whoever is listening to this right now, um, look forward to an actual Ramen Prosper uh, location and restaurant because all this is just done from our homes, you know, yep. and um, so, I mean, I, didn't, I, I can't even put it into words how excited I am and ex how excited Carlos is yep. to, to be able to, like, have an actual place to call our home say like, hey, we're Ramen Prosper and um, come to our spot and um, just live long and prosper. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nerd. <laughs> Nerd. Are you guys planning to do other pop-ups? Should I follow your Instagram? Yeah, so go ahead and follow her. Uh, Go ahead and follow Ramen Prosper on Instagram, and you know you'll you'll be updated uh, probably pretty consistently. Um, 
I know Genesis from, from Napolito wants to do more pop-ups. And uh, as the weather gets a little bit colder, you know, it's a little bit, you know, it's, um, people are more geared to have some like hot soup, right? Absolutely. Um, and then we hope to also, you know, eventually kind of branch out to different styles, you know, maybe do a Shio sometime, maybe do yes. you know, something else. So, yes. So we definitely want to, you know, combine our experiences of what we learned with ramen and, you know, present it to the Rio Grande Valley. And, uh, I agree. Feed everybody food that yeah. makes everybody happy, I guess. Yeah, very happy. Very happy. So check us out on Instagram. Um, you'll hear from us a lot. Ramen yeah. underscore prosper. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs>